You know, I think the, the biggest issue I see is uncertainty because we used to know where we stood. If you go back 10, 15 years, there was government, there was business, and there was civil society in the middle, and they had different jobs, and they worked together, or not as the case may be, but they knew who they were, they had a strong identity. Um, now everything has changed. Business is becoming part of civil society, civil society is becoming part of government. So the question for most civil society activists is, well, where does that leave me? Um, do I continue doing the same thing? Do I become something else? Um, routes to social change are, are very different now. We used to think that you had to be in civil society in order to create social change, to be an activist and so on. Now that's no longer true and people are saying I can be just as effective in business or in government than I used to be in an NGO or a non-profit. So where does that leave the non-profit sector? That's induced, as we see here, a huge amount of rethinking and revisioning and doubts about the future. So the biggest issue is where are we going? Where do you think we are going? I think the trend towards working together across those sectors is irreversible. So I think if we're talking about climate change, solving global poverty, finding a cure for malaria, that will be a collective effort between um, progressive business people, multilateral world leaders and civil society activists uh, working together to pursue a single goal. But on the other hand, I think if we're talking about radical political activity, uh, deepening democracy, fighting power relations in your community, caring for each other and so on. That will remain a civil society function. I don't think big business is going to do that in the future. I don't think governments are appropriate or effective in doing it in the future. So there are a whole host of roles where civil society is going to have to live up to its reputation, if you like, and deliver on those things. So the future will be a mixture of working together to solve big problems on the one hand and maintaining a radical spirit in society, which is what transforms the world in the long term. There is a sense at the moment, certainly in Europe, that governments have kind of lost the plot. Um, do you think that there is a sense in which civil society is going to have to step in to come up with solutions um, in, this, in this very uncertain political and economic crisis that we're in at the moment? I do. I think that's a big expectation. Whether civil society groups can deliver is another matter. They've never been really knowledge organisations. You know, they have never really existed to generate lots of policy ideas, although some of them do through think tanks and so on. So if they're going to fill that gap, they have to retool themselves pretty radically in, uh, in order to get there. Um, you know, I, I think the reality is that none of us know where we're heading. None of us have a solution to the financial crisis. None of us know how to cope with climate change. None of us know how to restructure the economy so that it's both fair and sustainable. And whether you're a government or civil society and business, no one claims that they have the answer. So uh, that's uh, you know, a call for everyone, I think, to be thinking much more actively and together about those big challenges rather than falling back into their silos. But what civil society can do, I believe that no one else can does, is to almost think the unthinkable, is to go to those places where government doesn't want to go, where business, where there are too many risks for business to go. Well, who is left to ask the really big questions of life? You know, Where are we going? What do we want our society to be? Those are civil society questions. So in those areas, I think you'll see civic groups becoming much more um, you know, influential. Uh, but I don't think they will replace government and they certainly won't replace the private sector. That's unrealistic. Can I just ask you a bit about how you see the role of global communications and the ease of communication that the internet has provided us with? How significant has that been and does that continue to be for civil society, for organisation, for activism? Well, it's very significant and I think hugely positive. It means we have an incredibly faster way of communicating, organising, networking and so on. But it's only a tool. Um, you know, when the telephone was invented, we would have had the same conversation. Uh, and it doesn't solve problems of poverty and exclusion and oppression by itself. But every decent organisation wants to make the best use possible of every tool. And you'd be stupid not to be using social media to its ultimate potential. But social media doesn't, um, by itself, um, confront or, or solve those problems. So you need to blend the best of the old traditions of street protest and community organising with the best of the new traditions about social media and then you have a powerful combination.
Is there a single issue that you think is the key issue that we face, uh, you know, in a, in a global context and mm -hmm. in a local context? Yeah, I think it's the shape of the new economy. Um, we know that um, continu continuing as we are is unsustainable. We can't continue to grow ourselves out of the problems that growth itself has created. So what's the alternative? No one really wants to face that question. So there's a classic civil society question. You know, if no one else is talking about it, then we should be talking about it. But not just talking, experimenting, acting locally, uh, finding new models of doing business with each other and so on. Unless we find and give practical expression to a new economy in really radical ways, we're going nowhere and civil society should be at the front of that process. How useful is it to be able to come together and discuss these sorts of issues at events like this one? It's very useful because most non-profits are very busy and they tend to devalue learning and uh, conversation because it's not work. You know? If we're talking with each other, if we're learning from each other, then we're not doing the real work. And of course that's very damaging because it takes you away from the kind of, of uh, thinking you need to do to be effective in the longer term. So occasions like this are really the only places, the only times when people can get away from that desk and say, let's look ahead, let's be more honest with each other, let's do some self-criticism, let's listen to some new ideas and see where we go from there, and then go back and put them into action. You know, if that wasn't happening, there would be no sort of reflection, uh, uh, no renewal in the organisations that need it. So these things are absolutely essential. Now, as an expert in your field, and you've obviously had many, many years of study into, into this sector. Can I ask you to, put, to gaze into your crystal ball? How do you see civil society in 50 years' time? Is it possible to even hazard a guess? Well, it's partly, it's very conduct dependent. So civil society in China will have a different view to the civil society in, in California. But I hope what will happen is, is that there will be a rebirth of large-scale citizen action, like Occupy, the Occupy movements that we see around us at the moment. Spontaneous, self-organized, ordinary people coming together in large numbers because they really care about the state of the societies they live in. Technology will help. You'll see a lot more international technology-based movements. You'll see, I think, a much bigger, a much higher profile for civil society in different forms of politics. You'll see civil society leaders moving into government positions, positions of power. You'll see an increasing overlap between business and the civil society community. Uh, but none of that is a substitute for large numbers of ordinary people getting out and demonstrating and creating a different future. And if civil society is not doing that, then it's not living up to its history.